Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a great morning. Uh, so excited to be here uh, today. My name is Rosa DeLauro. I represent the third district of uh, uh, Connecticut. Uh, I want to say a thank you to all of you uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, I can't tell you how proud I am to stand with my colleagues, with our champions, and our leader speaker, Nancy Pelosi. I want to say a thank you to the folks, the champions uh, on, the, on the riser here. Uh, the organizations and the individuals who never flagged for a moment in advocating uh, for equal pay for equal work. Today, we are introducing the Paycheck Fairness Act, a bill that has the support of every Democratic member of our caucus and one, and one Republican. I, I bring the regrets of our, our Senate colleague, Patty Murray, who holds a companion um, legislation uh, in the Senate, and I might add there are 47 uh, Senate Democrats uh, uh, on the legislation there as well. Uh, and uh, Lord knows we've been in this fight side by side for, uh, for many years. Um, I, I, I want to, I will try to move quickly. We have a, a, um, a wonderful group of people here to speak and, and also other colleagues who are here to support us uh, in, in this effort. Um, we have uh, our Majority Leader Hoyer, we have the Chairman of the Ed and, Ed and Labor Committee, Bobby Smith, Alma Adams of Ed and Bobby Labor, Scott. Bobby Scott, <laughs> Bobby Scott, Bobby Smith, anyway, Bobby Scott. Um, trying to move quickly here, so. Uh, from the Democratic Women's Working Group, uh, uh, Lois Frankel, uh, and Brenda Lawrence, and Jackie Spear, Barbara Lee of California here, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez as well. Uh, Deborah Vagans of the American Association of U uh, University Women, Emily Martin of the National Women's Law Center, and Deborah Ness of the National Partnership for Women and Families, and of course, Lily Ledbetter, who fearlessly, fearlessly, fearlessly challenged unequal pay for women. She led the way. And I want to say a thank you to Adriana Hutchings from Washington State, and thank you for your courage in standing up and telling your story today. Uh, yes, we have a long program today. Uh, am I going to apologize for that? No. No, 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 because we can make history. If you look and you listen to our speakers, it says everything about the history that we will make. For more than two decades, we pushed, we battled to strengthen the 1963 Equal Pay Act. We battled to elevate pay discrimination, to emphasize how nothing is more right and nothing would make more of a difference to working families in this country. I cannot tell you how difficult it has been to break through on something so simple that men and women in the same job deserve the same pay. That's what this is about. But we have pushed. We pushed back 10 years ago, we passed the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. And this week, we are celebrating that giant victory because it reopened the courtroom doors for women like Lilly. But as Lilly said at the signing ceremony, we must give women real power. And now we have this historic opportunity to do so. Our battle and this historic election joined to put power in the hands of a new Congress propelled by women, by the young, by working people, and by people of color. And now equal pay must be achieved. Speaker, Speaker Pelosi said, we must seize this moment and pass paycheck fairness. Equal pay is a matter of right and wrong, and that dis discrimination is unacceptable, and that we are all diminished when we fall short. President Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act 45 years ago, and he said it, and I quote, add to our laws another structure basic to democracy and affirm our determination that when women enter the labor force, they will find equality in their paycheck. We have that opportunity to make good on that promise, finally, and we are going to take it. It is a pleasure for me. I must introduce the Speaker of the House, 
close friend, fierce ally, a devoted supporter of the Paycheck Fairness, she made it clear from day one that this was an absolute priority. How honored I am, and we all are, that she heads our program today, and it's a pleasure to fight alongside with her for women's economic equality. Speaker Pelosi. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And as Rosa said, it is a very good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here. This is a great day for us to be in the presence of Lily Ledbetter, a woman of great courage who made it, is making a big difference in our country. Ten years ago, ten years ago, when de uh, Democrats uh, were in, took, well, we were in the majority, but now we had a Democratic president, uh, we sent the president one of the first pieces of legislation passed by the new Congress, the Lilly Ledbetter Act. It was the first bill signed by President Barack Obama ten years ago today. That is the priority he and we placed on workplace fairness. Uh, this was possible by the leadership of Rosa DeLauro then and now, relentless. I don't know whether we call her the godmother of all good things for women <laughs> or, or, or the guardian angel who has guided us. She introduced paycheck fairness then. Yes. Uh, she is introducing it now with 100% of the House Democratic Caucus in support of it. Uh, just in acknowledging what happened 10 years ago, I want to acknowledge the work of George Miller, who at the time was the chair of the Education and Labor Committee, and we're so honored that the chair of the Education and Labor Committee, Bobby Scott, <laughs> is with us, <laughs> with us today. Uh, Rosa acknowledged our dignitaries who are here, our VIPs, because uh, when Adriana speaks and Lily speaks, they are the heroes of all of this. Uh, but it's really important to know this is part of a fuller agenda of uh, paid sick leave and uh, access to quality, affordable child care uh, to make uh, women in the workplace have uh, the opportunities uh, that, that we all should. Uh, it will be hopefully signed, Mr. Leader. Uh, the leader will take us to the floor with this, and we hope that the bill will be signed by the President of the United States by April 2nd, which is Equal Pay Day. That is the day women start earning the money that they worked, uh, didn't get paid for the first three months uh, of the year. Uh, but it is, again, an honor for me to yield now uh, to a woman who you had to have seen of the determination in her eyes, the courage of her fight, uh, the difference that she has made. Her name is synonymous with equality for women in our country. And she knows that when women succeed, America succeeds. Yes. Nobody's made a bigger difference than our special guest, Lily Ledbetter. Yes. Good morning. Yes, I am Lily Ledbetter, and I'm here on the 10th anniversary of the bill that bears my name, which allows the women their day in court, like I had mine, for equal pay, for equal work. I'm here because equal pay for equal work is an American value, and it's time that we have American reality with that. Ten years ago, I stood beside President Obama as he signed a law to ensure that all workers who faced discrimination like I did could have their day in court. The Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act was essential to achieving equal pay after the Supreme Court wrongfully denied me and all workers the right to hold employers accountable for, to federal equal pay laws. The court told me I should have filed and brought my case the first check I received, even though I didn't know it at the time and I had no way to prove it at the time. But when I got the anonymous tip 20 years later, I carried my case to the Equal Employment Commission and then to the federal court and then on to the Supreme Court. As Justice Ginsburg said in her dissent, the Supreme Court majority was out of line with the realities of the American workforce, especially when so many employers ban workers from discussing their pay, like my employer, Goodyear, did. 
For 20 years, I took home wages tainted by discrimination, wages significantly less than my male colleagues who were junior to me and some I had trained. But I had no idea all through those years that I was being cheated until someone did give me the anonymous tip. I couldn't let the Supreme Court decision stand because I knew this fight was not just about me, Lily Ledbetter. It was about all workers, all women, and all families across this nation who were deprived of their hard-earned money. I worked with many friends here today and with Congress to fix this injustice, and we successfully passed the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which I could never have accomplished without the leadership, most of them are standing behind me, which restored the long-standing principle that ongoing wage discrimination at work can be challenged regardless of when it began. Ten years later, I'm asking Congress to step up again. The Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act was a vital first step, but it cannot be the last. As critical as my law is, it didn't give women new tools to challenge the wage gap. President Kennedy signed that equal pay law in 1963, but 50 years later, women are still being paid only 80 cents for every dollar men earn. Those pennies add up to real money. That's why the Paycheck Fairness Act is so important. It provides real protection for real employees in the real world. If the Paycheck Fairness Act had been the law when I was working, it would have helped ensure that I got the wages, the retirement, and the Social Security that I had actually earned. Take it from me, the consequences of pay discrimination, they last your entire life. So I think Representative Rosa DeLaurel and Senator Murray for their reintroducing this critical legislation today. We cannot subject another generation of women, our daughters, our granddaughters, to this injustice. This is the time to make equal pay a reality. Now we have a chance to hear from Adriana Hutchison, who has been a proud Moms Rising member for over 10 years. She has three special needs kids and was the primary caregiver for her parents and grandmother for 14 years. She knows firsthand the challenges facing families today and her experiences are what shape her motto, never give up. It is a pleasure to have her here today to share her story. Adriana. Thank you. Hello, my name is Adriana Hutchings and I'm from Olympia, Washington. Um, I'm the mom of three kids, two sons and a daughter. And first I'd like to thank um, Representative DeLauro and um, also Senator Murray and Moms Rising for inviting me here today to speak about the Paycheck Fairness Act. I and millions of women around the country have experienced gender wage discrimination. I'm here because I want my children to grow up in a world where my sons and daughter earn equal pay for equal work. I want to ensure that my daughter never has to experience pay inequality like I did. In 1993, I was working in a small family-owned restaurant, and one day I walked into my boss's office and I saw a post-it note on the bulletin board. And it was saying that my colleague, who I'll call Fred, earned $5.50 an hour. Well, I earned $4.85 an hour for the same work, which is ne nearly a full dollar less for the same exact work. At the time, I was living paycheck to paycheck, trying to work my way through college and eating rice every night and just really barely scraping by. And now I know that I was being paid unfairly and missing out on rightful and much needed income. But I'm not alone. As a Moms Rising member, I've heard a number of women recount, recount their experiences with unequal pay. 
and nobody sticks out more to me than Laura. She was hired for the same position at the same agency as her husband, but was offered 13% less per year. Even worse, Laura was more qualified than her husband. Um, she'd worked in the field for over five years. The only key difference between Laura and her husband, Laura was Chinese American and her husband was a white man. We've taken steps to address this injustice before. 10 years ago today, or yeah, today, President Obama signed the Lilly Ledbetter Act into law, which restored the rights of pay discrimination victims, but no, more needs to be done. In 2019, moms and women of color face severe wage gaps. Moms are making just 69 cents on the dollar compared to dads and women of color are making as little as 49 cents on the dollar. Overall, women who work full-time, year-round, are still only paid 80 cents for every dollar men earn. That adds to up to over $10,000 per year. We need Congress to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act to help close this gap and break the harmful patterns of pay discrimination and establish stronger workplace protections for women. Along with paid family and medical leave, paid sick days, and affordable child care, the Paycheck Fairness Act would go a long way ensuring that women receive equal pay. And this year, I'm particularly hopeful. The 2018 elections were a watershed moment for equal pay. In competitive races, equal pay was the issue most commonly included in the candidates' platforms who were running for the Senate and the House. Now with the most diverse Congress in history, yay, <laughs> Woo! we are more primed than ever to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. We need this law because me and Laura's stories are all too common. I believe strongly that it's time for change. Thank you again to Senator Murray and Representative DeLauro for introducing this bill and fighting for these important issues. It's great. I'm going to, I, I just want to say the courage of the women who stand up, and I have to go back to Lily for one second. When she was going through this process of litigation, and she told me this story many years ago, she went to her family, she went to her husband, and she said, we could lose everything if we go down this road. And he said, and they agreed to move forward, what they were willing to do to stand up for what is right. So we thank all of the women who are courageous in getting out there on this issue. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce uh, our majority leader, uh, Steny Hoyer, uh, I, somebody who has been so committed to women's e equality, and that's throughout his career fighting for women and families, because he knows that the country uh, cannot succeed uh, unless uh, unless, in fact, women and families do. So we're grateful for your support, Stanley, long-lasting support, and to have you here today. Lily, thank you for your courage, Andriana. Thank you for your courage. And thank you for all of those who are wearing the M's uh, on your uh, T-shirts. Uh, you make a difference. I represent a number of people in my district, obviously, but specifically, I want to tell you that I'm representing Susan, Stephanie, and Ann, my three daughters. Alexa, Ava, Judy, uh, my three granddaughters, and Savannah, And Brooklyn, my two great granddaughters. And I also represent here husbands and sons and partners who rely for their daily well being on the wages of their wives, of their moms, of their partners. 
This is not just about women, it's about families and what America stands for. I got into politics because of John Kennedy. He was taken from us in 1963, but before he died in 1963, he said, we're going to have equal pay. And here we are over half a century later saying we need to have equal pay for equal work. That's fair, but it's also critical for family welfare. So I'm proud to be here with Speaker Pelosi, Godmother DeLauro, <laughs> Chairman Scott, <laughs> and other members and leaders to reintroduce the Paycheck Fairness Act today. With Democrats now in the majority in the House, we will be advancing legislation. I bring bills to the floor. This bill is coming to the floor. It's coming to the floor soon, and we're going to pass it. The wage gap where women earn on average, as you've heard over and over again, 80 cents, and that's up but it's not where it needs to be. It needs to be one for one, two for two, 10 for 10, 100 for 100, whatever that figure is. Same work, same pay. Gender is irrelevant. It is the work that is performed. It is the content of character, the content of performance that ought to be the criteria, not gender. It's even worse for women of color. Four in 10 families in our country are supported primarily by women's incomes. That's why I speak for sons. This is an economic issue as much as it is a social justice issue. I was proud to bring the Lilly Ledbetter uh, Fair Pay Act to the floor when I was majority leader a long time ago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you did. And we stood there yes, when the president did. signed that bill. Yes, we did. So I'm pleased to be with all these courageous leaders in our country. They're women. They're heroes for those uh, eight people that I mentioned who are my daughters, my granddaughters, and my great-granddaughters. And now I want to introduce somebody who also represents, as I do, those who rely on uh, others to help them and their families who relied on their moms. My mom worked. She worked at the Navy Federal Credit Union. And I have no idea, Lily, but I'll bet she got paid less for doing what she, she did, did than her male counterpart. She did. And that was wrong. wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the real heroes in leadership in, of equality and fairness in America, Chairman Bobby Scott, Chairman of the Education <laughs> Committee. Thank you, Stenny, and thank you for your leadership. Uh, I don't want to thank uh, Congressman. Rosa DeLora for her leadership over the years. Uh, it, uh, more than two decades of friendship and two decades of working, fighting for American workers. Uh, anyone who has fought to end discrimination knows that the barriers do not fall easily. When President Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act in 1963, our country codified the fundamental principle of equal pay for equal work. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 built on this notion that pay discrimination on the basis of sex is illegal, and thanks to these land landmark laws and the Lilly Ledbetter Act, we have made substantial progress towards making that simple but elusive goal a reality. Uh, today, uh, more than half a century later, at a time when women make up about half the workforce and own more than 11 million businesses nationwide, gender-based discrimination still persists. And so we must continue to be persistent in addressing pay, uh, unequal pay. Now, I'm chair of the House Committee on Education and Labor, and I'm making the pay, pay, Paycheck Fairness Act one of the committee's highest priorities. And within the next month, we'll have hearings on the bill, and we will report it out of committee shortly thereafter. And then we'll hand it over to Thank Leader Boyer to pass it on the floor. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to strike a blow to injustice of equal pay. And I look forward to joining my colleagues on the House floor to pass, to, to, to uh, cast a vote for final passage of the act. So I want to thank everyone for being here today. And now it's my honor to introduce the chair of the Subcommittee on Workforce Protections, Congresswoman Alma Adams. Yeah. 
Thank you, Bobby. 91 days. That's three months. And that's what it takes the average woman to earn what her male peers earned in 2018. And that's unacceptable. And like Lily Ledbetter and Fannie Lou Hamer, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of the ongoing inequality. From North Carolina House to the U.S. House, three decades I've been fighting to close gender and wage gaps. Fifty-six years have passed, and since we signed the Equal Pay Act into law, and it's been ten years since President Obama signed the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act into law. But today in my district in North Carolina, women still make about 82 cents for every dollar earned by a man. Nationally, that statistic is even worse. It's 80 cents for every dollar. Women of color are even less likely to make as much as a man working the same job. Black women earn only 63 cents for every dollar a man makes. When women are shortchanged, our children, our families, our economy are shortchanged. It shortchanges us $500 billion a year. Black women on average lose $840,000 over the course of a 40-year career. And that means that she'll have to stay in the workforce 23 years longer than a man in order to earn the same amount. And that's unacceptable. It is absolutely urgent that we act and we act now. Because every day we don't. It's a day that women don't get paid equal wages for equal work. It's all about power. And power is what makes the difference in lives and communities. And you know, you don't ask anybody how to get it, where it is, or can you have it? You take it. And when you take it, you use it. I'm proud today to stand with Representative DeLauro and Speaker Pelosi and Majority Leader Hoyer and all of our colleagues to demand that we close the wage gap now and pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. And as the new chair of the Subcommittee on Workforce Protections, I'm proud to support this bill, and I am so excited to take it up as soon as possible. Right. Now, I am very proud to introduce Representative Frankel, one of the co-chairs of our Democratic Women's Working Group. She puts working families and working women at the heart of everything she does. Congresswoman Frankel. Thank you, right. thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Hello. I'll also thank our godmother, Rosa DeLauro, <laughs> our chairman, Bobby Scott, of course, our speaker, and all my colleagues and the advocates that are here today. So, uh, uh, and of course, our heroine, Lily Ledbetter. L Lily, I have a story. It's, it's a little story. It's not a big story, okay? It's a little story, but I think it's represented, there's probably millions of little stories like the one I'm going to tell, okay? So there was a young lawyer, and she, she was in a public defender's office. Her job was to represent uh, people who were accused of crimes for, for free. And she had really a terrible, I mean, her clients were accused of murder and robbery. And the job was very high pressure. It was very grueling. But she loved it. And one day, she found out that a male colleague of hers who had the same credentials actually made $2,000 more. Now she was making, eight, it wasn't a lot of big high pay job, but she was making $18,000 a year and he was making $20,000 a year, okay? Um, and then she asked her boss why, and this is what she was told. He had a wife and child to take care of. So, uh, now, obviously, that, that was me 40 years ago. And you know what? It still, <laughs> wait, 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 I want to tell you something. It still makes me angry to think about it, because I want to tell you something. I was a much better lawyer than this guy. <laughs> I mean, really. We have no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, so I, I left. I, listen, I was young. I, Lily, I didn't even know. I don't think I knew I could sue. I wouldn't have sued because I, I was making so little money. Anyway, and I had a little baby by then. So I went on to uh, private practice. And you know what? Maybe I had that same problem again. But you know what? We weren't allowed to discuss sa our salary. So I, I never knew. So listen, I don't want to say this. I am not complaining about my life journey. 
Uh, fortunately, I have a job now that pays the same as my male colleague. <laughs> And I'm in a position to do something about it, okay? Uh, but I think it was said by somebody, you know, as a result of lower lifetime earnings and different work patterns, uh, the average Social Security benefit for women 65 and older is about 14,000 plus per year compared to almost $19,000 for a man. So, so I, I was just, before I turn this over to my uh, great colleague here, I just, I think we should say this emphatically over and over again. Women go to work, most women go to work for the same reasons men go to work, yes. Yes. to earn money to pay our rent and other necessities. Uh, but regardless of the circumstances, we deserve to be paid equally for our work. And for this to be more than a slogan, we need this legislation that has remedies uh, to enforce the law. And I am so proud to be a co-sponsor co of this bill, as is my great colleague, Brenda Lawrence, mm -hmm. who's my who's a, uh, chair of the Bipartisan Women's Caucus, co-chair of the Women's the Democratic Caucus, Brenda Lawrence from Michigan. Yeah. Just a few days ago, we went through a very hard time in the history of our country where our government was shut down. We were confronted with the stories of the impact of lack of pay. We were heartbroken at those who wanted to work and didn't have a salary. I stand here today representing women in this 116th Congress. We are confronted with the reality that poverty in America is unacceptable. The pay wage gap is creating a devastating effect on our economy. If we really are committed to reducing poverty in America, we must ensure that women, women are being paid at an equal pay as men. When we talk about poverty in America, the largest group are women with children. And you know, I always tell people, don't tell me what you believe or what you're gonna fight for, I follow your money. And in America, if we are committed to reducing poverty, to lifting women up, because we know if you educate a woman, you educate her family. If you are paying a fair wage to a woman, you are elevating the entire home. And when a woman is a single head of household, we are making an impact. This is a time where we stand on the shoulders of a woman who is brave enough to stand up and say this is not acceptable in our America. This one nation under God that we fight for that says we are all equal, then we as America must stand up and we do it through our laws and through our policy and I'm so proud to stand here with my godmother, Delora, <laughs> and to stand here with all the women who are fighting every single day. We are not done. We want equal pay. We want equal rights in our Constitution. We will continue on the 100th year that we got the right to vote in this great country. And it's that woman that sits on the top of this Capitol, the Lady of Freedom, will have a sword in one hand and the wreath of love and harmony. I bring up our next speaker. That will be Jackie Spears. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Rosa, you're my sister, not my godmother, just for the record. But um, you are the mother of Paycheck Fairness. And Lily Ledbetter, you are um, the voice and the, the symbol of what's wrong in our country with the laws. Because what we have allowed to have happen without paycheck fairness is the institutionalization of the feminization of poverty. We are not going to allow that to continue in this country. Lily Ledbetter thought because she was working for a government contractor that they were playing by the rules. Nobody plays by the rules until we put it in the rules. And that is why um, we are concerned because what happens is when a woman isn't paid the same as a man for the same work, in terms of her retirement over the course of her life, 
she's lost $400,000. And if she is a woman of color, she has lost $800,000 over the course of her life. If she's a Native American woman, it is $900,000. If she is Latina, it's a million dollars in lost wages because she has not been given the same salary as a man doing the same work. So we are here to get rid of the institutionalization of feminization of poverty, and we're going to do it this year. Thank you. All right. Now, to my other sister in good crime, Barbara Lee. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yes to Congresswoman DeLauro, our godmother and our friend and a great leader who has stayed the course, who is passionate and valiant and really uh, displays a clarity of purpose in her life. And this is a day, Rosa, that's very, very <laughs> exciting. I am so happy today. And Lily, let me just thank you. I was there in the White House when President Obama signed the Lily Ledbetter Act. And that, what a proud day that was for all of us, and to Adriana, and to all of our groups here today. We wouldn't be here today if it weren't for you. So thank you so much. Let me uh, just say a couple of things. Uh, first, as my colleague, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, great woman from Detroit, Michigan, just said, uh, and mentioned in terms of poverty, make no mistake that it, uh, the gender pay gap is a poverty trap. It's a poverty trap. Pay discrimination, unequal pay in the workplace prevents women and families from climbing into the middle class. And we all know that the wage gap is most severe, as has been said earlier, for women of color who face discrimination because of their race and, yes, their gender. So both we face. And these numbers have already been shared today, but they bear repeating. While white women earn just 80 cents, just 80 cents, for every dollar paid to a white man. Black women make 63 cents on the dollar, Native American women make just 57 cents, and Latinas make a shocking 54 cents to every dollar made by a white man. For far too many families, uh, especially families of color, the wage gap is the reason why they can't afford groceries or rent at the end of the month. And yes, um, in their senior year, years, as Lois mentioned, uh, their Social Security checks and their retirement savings and their retirement security is so much less. And Social Security has been a pathway out of poverty for so many. And here we have women now in their senior years not being able to afford uh, to pay their bills because of the lifelong pay discrimination and wage gap that they experience and have been victimized with. Now, I started working, Lois, when I was about 14, and uh, I was on work study then, and uh, even then the boys got more. Uh, and it was, uh, and then I continued to work throughout my life. I've never stopped. And it, it was very, very difficult when I realized that um, I was making a lot less than, um, a man or a boy then who was making, and I was doing the same work. But yet, because of the chilling effect of this and learning this, I never said anything about it and just took it. Well, Lily, you and Adriana and all of my colleagues here today and Rosa, you are saying no more. Women do not have to take this anymore. We're going to pass this bill. Uh, it's inexcusable that this wage gap still exists. A recent study uh, found that closing the wage gap would cut poverty rates among working women in half, from 8% to 3.8%. Now that's stunning. So it's not just a question of fairness and equality that all of us are fighting for, but it's also one of economic and racial justice. So it's past time that Congress pass H.R. 7, right, Rosa? H.R. 7, the Paycheck Fairness Act to ensure that women receive equal pay for equal work. With that, I am now incredibly uh, proud to introduce our sister from uh, where, where is that? New York, <laughs> Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. 
AOC, <laughs> who has brought incredible energy and brilliance and vision to the halls of Congress. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Lee, and I'd like to thank all of the organizers and the women who, who organized and worked so hard to make this moment happen. I often tell our folks back home that we can legislate as far as we organize, and it really starts with that on-the-ground work. I'd also like to thank, that, thank all of, uh, all of all of the women who in, in Congress who worked to bring this legislation not just to the floor, but to be one of the top 10 priorities for the Democratic Caucus. That sends a powerful message to this country that says women matter, that people of all gender identities should be treated equally. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really impactful to be here and also to see these organizers of, uh, in the back and here up front to show that this is truly an intergenerational issue. I remember when I was a teenager, you'd read about feminist movements. <laughs> you'd, read about, <laughs> you'd read about feminist movements in, the, in school, and it, it sound, and it sounds the way the feminist movement is, is spoken about. It sounds like it's something from decades ago. It's not presented as though it's a present struggle for the current day, but I remember, uh, fast forward, <laughs> um, not too long ago, when a friend was telling me that she was secretly circulating a Google Sheet with all of her friend's salaries on it at work. And so whether it's a post-it note that you discover in your manager's office, or whether it's a Google Doc that you hide from your boss, um, we, we implicitly recognize as women that the pay gap and the wage gap is an injustice that persists through secrecy, and it's an injustice that persists to the present day. And the only way that we can combat that is through organizing in our personal action ourselves. So I'm so happy that, that the Paycheck Fairness Act addresses, among many things, two very critical ones. One is that we cannot ask for salary history and pay people depending on their salary history anymore. Anymore. Because it is time that we pay people what they are worth and not how little they are desperate enough to accept. Yes. It is time to pay people what they are worth, and that has nothing to do with their history. It has everything to do with what they are worth today. And the second thing is that it makes it, a, a, it, makes it legal and it makes it totally permissible to share your salary information at your workplace. And that's incredibly important because for all of those who say that the wage gap does not exist and that it's a myth, then they should have no problem proving that <laughs> by allowing the disclosure of salaries in the workplace. So I'm so thankful to, to just be able to uh, co-sponsor and be that backup in this legislation that so many people have worked so hard to bring today. Thank you very much. Right. And next, I'd, uh, I'd like to introduce Deborah Vagans from the American Association of, of University Women. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Deborah Vagans. I'm the Senior Vice President of Public Policy and Research at the American Association of University Women. I'm so pleased to be here today and joined by my CEO, Kim Churches. Um, we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization with 170,000 members and supporters nationwide committed to advancing gender equity. We help lead the Paycheck Fairness Act Coalition, so we appreciate the shout out for the organizers. Um, and we've been joined by 260 national, state, and local groups supporting this important bill's reintroduction today. Um, as you know, as you've heard, this is an historic Congress, but not just because of the record number of women who were sworn into the most diverse Congress in history, but because so many members, men and women alike, ran and won on issues of economic security, on kitchen table issues. The truth is, we cannot achieve economic security without guaranteeing equal pay for equal work. Pay discrimination threatens the very economic security of women, of families, and our nation's economy. You've heard the stark statistics from all the amazing luminaries before me. 
Year after year, women take home less money than they have rightfully earned in virtually every industry in America. No matter what they do, no matter how much education they have, and no matter where they're from. <coughs> AUW's research shows that pay gaps start early in women's careers. Indeed, just one year after graduation, this is not a myth. It starts from the very beginning, and it continues to affect women's retirement and Social Security for the rest of their lives, their entire working career. The disparities follow women from job to job. And as you've heard, we can't even talk about what's happening at work in many cases. So women from red, blue, and purple states all face this problem, and it must end. So that is why the Paycheck Fairness Act is so important. I'm honored to stand here with Lily Ledbetter today, as I did over a decade ago as we fought to pass the law that bears her name. And I'm inspired by the continued fight for laws, I'm inspired by her continued fight for laws that will never recompense her for the sacrifices that she's made to fight for all of us. But as Lily said, in order to close the gender wage gap, we must empower workers and pass new and stronger laws. We've learned a lot about how workplace discrimination operates since we passed the Equal Pay Act of 1963, and it's the Paycheck Fairness Act that gives us the protections and remedies and tools so workers can get the compensation they should have been paid. I just want to applaud Representative DeLauro and all the wonderful women and men oh, uh, behind me, <laughs> and Senator Murray for introducing this bill today. My hope, and I think it's been affirmed today, is that when we gather again, for Equal Pay Day, which is April 2nd this year, we will be celebrating House passage of this bill and then on to the Senate. Right. So, yes. thank, thank you very much. And, and I just want to introduce Emily Martin from the National Women's Law Center, who's a wonderful friend and leader um, on all, all of the things that affect women and girls. And um, I was specifically asked to note that um, she started her distinguished career in Congresswoman DeLauro's um, district at Yale Law School. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. So I am so thrilled to be here standing shoulder to shoulder with so many of the leaders of the 116th Congress in support of the Paycheck Fairness Act. Thank you to Rosa DeLauro, to Speaker Pelosi, to uh, Chairman Scott, to Senator Murray, to all of those who are standing up for equal pay. The November election showed us the power of women as voters and women as leaders, the power of women of color as voters and women of color as leaders, and the Paycheck Fairness Act is a key part of the answer to that call for change that we heard so loudly in November. And how do I know? Because the National Women's Law Center asked. We just got back results from a survey of voters we took earlier this month, and 67% of those voters said it was very important for Congress to work on improving economic opportunities for women and families this year. And we also found that almost 80% of voters supported Congress taking action to prohibit employers from setting your pay based on how much you got paid in your last job. Almost 80% of voters supported a requirement that employers share pay data with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission so the EEOC has the tools it needs to enforce pay discrimination laws. Those are key pieces of the Paycheck Fairness Act. And these issues garnered huge majorities of support from Democrats, independents, and Republicans alike. For voters, equal pay is not a partisan issue. And that's because a lot is at stake. As we've heard, based on today's wage gap, a woman who worked full-time year-round for 40 years stands to lose $406,000 over, over her career. And when you look specifically at the wage gap for women of color compared to white, non-Hispanic men, Latinas stand to lose over a million dollars over the course of their career, and Native women and black women close to a million dollars. Now that is life-changing money, money that could shift opportunities not just for the woman who has finally paid what she deserves, and not just for her family, but for entire communities, expanding possibilities for entire communities. For our economy to be strong, our families to be economically secure, for our nation to be just, 
Women need to be able to work with equality and dignity and safety, and the Paycheck Fairness Act is a key part of achieving that promise. I'm so excited about the future working for this law and seeing it move in the next few weeks. Um, and now I'm really proud to introduce Deborah Ness, President of the National Partnership for Women and Families. Thank you, Emily. Um, and I am honored to be here with uh, all of the incredible folks, but especially the indomitable Rosa DeLauro, um, the incomparable Speaker Pelosi, and the courageous Lily Ledbetter, who inspires all of us to keep this fight going. So going last in a long line of incredible speakers, it's a very hard thing to do. What do you say after everything has already be, been said? Um, so I'm going to say just a couple things that haven't been said that need to be said. And I'm going to start by saying that too often in these conversations about wage discrimination, white women fail to step up as strong allies for our fellow women of color. So I want to stand here personally and on behalf of the National Partnership for Women and Family as an ally to all of the women of color who spoke before me and who are fighting for this cause to say that we stand with you and that we know that if we put women of color at the center of fixing these issues, it is only then that all women will be able to achieve a better life. And while the gender gap, the gender wage gap disproportionately harms women of color, I will say it does not discriminate when it comes to the type of work. So it persists regardless of industry or job or education level, whether you're a teacher or a retail worker, or a CEO or factory worker, you could be an Oscar winner or a World Cup champion. Women are paid less than men. And it's especially harmful to the women who do the hidden work, those who take care of our children and our loved ones, who clean our houses and our workplaces, and the women who serve our food. Less pay, as we've heard, means that women have less money to spend on childcare, on groceries, on tuition, and that accumulates over and over and holds them back and reaches all the way into their end of life years. So I'm going to get ambitious here, and I am really unapologetic about it. I want to thank the members of Congress who are working to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act, but I'm going to say that if we're going to prioritize the concerns of the women across this country who elected the most female and most diverse country uh, Congress in our history, then we have got to do more than just think about the wage gap. We have also got to pass the Raise the Wage Act. We have also got to pass the Family Act to ensure we have paid leave in this country. We have to pass the Healthy Families Act to make sure that we have paid sick days guaranteed for every worker. The Fair Schedules Work Act so that we know we can count on some kind of reasonable, predictable schedules. We need the Empower Act to prevent sexual harassment and violence in the workplace and we need the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. They're all part of a whole. They're all part of what we need for women and families to thrive in this country. So I want to say thank you again to all of you. Join us in this fight. Um, and one last thing. Women have proved over and over again that we can get it done. And what better example of that do we have than what we, what we just saw over these past few weeks with Speaker Pelosi? So we will get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to. I'm to open for questions, but I wanted to say, without AAUW, without the partnership, without the Law Center, we would not be standing here today. Thank you for the years of data and research and advocacy. And again, as Alexandria said, to the organizers co coast to coast 
who made this possible. And Lily knows she slept across this country, uh, and, and as there, as several of us have uh, as well. And you know what is so critically important is we realize today. And when I said that this this battle has been joined. What a difference an election makes. You can take a piece of legislation, you can get it through committee, you can get it onto the floor of the House, and you can vote on it. And that's what we were going to do. If past history is anything, we won the Paycheck Fairness Bill twice. Uh, and we did it not in a bipartisan way with Democrats and Republicans. We're going to do it now, and we are going to get this bill signed. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Any questions? Barbara Kennelly, God, from the great state of Connecticut and was our Secretary of the State and served in this body and has been a wonderful dear friend and colleague for many years and here to support this effort. Thank you so much, Barbara. Any questions? If not, thank you. Thank you, and again, we're going to win it. Thanks very, very much.